can maybe start explaining what enablement is for those who still don't know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I so the way that I think about enablement is um, a little bit different from how others define it. You know, enablement was born, to your point, as a relatively nascent function. It was born from sales training and it's grown to be to encompass much more um, just out of the necessity of there being all these new teams that touch the customer. So there's this idea of a buyer journey that, you know, touches BDRs and account executives and sales engineers and customer success, account managers, the list goes on. Mm. Uh, and so for that reason, you've seen it rebranded to in just enablement, just revenue enablement and aligning to that buyer journey. So the way that I define it with that in mind is the proactive identification of gaps in that buyer journey um, and then working with leaders across all of those customer facing teams to shape priorities to solve those gaps. And there's kind of three main ways in which I believe that enablement should do that. Uh, there's optimizing process, which could be your sales process, could be your go to market process, the way you launch products. There's people optimizing people. That's your classic uh, onboarding, continuous development, training comes into play there. And then there's optimizing tools, which is, you know, working with your ops counterparts to ensure you have the right tools implemented, that they're optimized properly to drive ROI, all of that. So those are kind of the general areas of enablement. Yeah. That it, it feels like a classic, like uh, people process technology concept. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I still believe you probably the, the most interesting challenge or misconception is still people believe it's just a training like yeah. and, I, I, and i and i felt it myself too because i i was dealing a little bit about with with enablement in in, in my life and it always was like yeah yeah it's training training yeah it, it feels like that is that is that what it is how you fight that i think um it comes down to when you start in a new enablement role part of what's unique to the challenges of enablement is that because it's newer hmm you have to align on a definition um, and you have to advocate for the responsibilities that you think matter most, the strategic roadmap that you think matter most, while also accommodating and uh, aligning to the priorities of whoever your sponsor is. So let's say you can you report into the CRO, um, which I think is the ideal mm -hmm. uh, organizational structure for enablement. Yeah, they're, they're oftentimes going to hire enablement because of some need that they perceive as urgent and it's almost always super tactical and training focused they just let's say they just enabled a new enablement tool and so they need someone to just get the tags right and set up the tool or they're hiring a lot of new people they need someone to come in and train those new people through onboarding right mm -hmm. That's not always the best place to start when you're building a function from scratch in terms of scalability but you have to find a way to make quick quick impact crawl, walk, run, right? Get quick wins, gain that credibility while also building the roadmap that you know will work. And I have my own opinions on that. So to answer yeah. your question, to answer your question, how do you combat the idea of it just being training? I think that it's a give and take. When you have that conversation, when you start, you say, hey, and honestly, ideally, you're doing this before you start. What's your definition of enablement, you know, Mr. Hiring or Mrs. Hiring Manager? Uh, and then hopefully they're giving you an indication that they understand it's more than that. And, and okay. if not, hopefully they're willing to hear your version of it. It, it feels like every organization needs to mature and grow to the certain like a tipping point. Yeah. Whereas, okay, this is the right time to bring enablement. But I, I imagine some people just might not be aware that there is such a thing and they need to know about that. There's, there should be some like a moment of disruption in the company or the moment of realization, like, hey, something isn't working right. We need to find a solution and someone hopefully go and find that idea. Hey, we actually forgot about that because no one is questioning there's a need for sales because right. the function is so ingrained in the nature of the company that we know what sales is, why it exists, what potential success magic. We'll talk about those elements for, for enablement too, but how how what's the ideal time? To, to establish enablement function, like and what are the like maybe first steps with yeah. it? So um, high level, I'd say it's it's when a company is ready to scale. And and I actually found uh, pretty recently through reading a book called Founding Sales by Peter Kazanji. Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely recommend. 
um, he has this rule where being ready for scale requires a, a 25% or higher win rate that is counterbalanced by a 25% or lower cost of sales. And so essentially, uh -huh. You want to make sure that that's in place while you also have at least 10 AEs and revenue growing exponentially without hiring. The reason I mention that is because when you see revenue growing exponentially without hiring, and this is also touching on kind of the idea of crossing the chasm, another great book, mm -hmm. that's a sign that you've found product market fit and you have to start expanding your resources to keep up with demand, right? And so when you're at that point, you have a you have a foundation that works which you know i believe enablement can help figure that out but enablement sweet spot is mm -hmm. when you're building frameworks to make what works repeatable and scalable can and we so can can we call it like an improving function enhancing function rather than like the core like yeah i think i think you could say that absolutely i think um, the reason that enablement was born was was because sales managers were way too busy helping their reps, coaching their reps, how to close deals, and then they moved on to the next deal and the next deal and the next deal and the next deal. There wasn't mm -hmm. anyone who could focus on, at least once the, the leadership, the executive team got too busy to do this, there's no one who could focus on how do I aggregate insights from how all this is being done and make it repeatable and, and help the company grow. So I think that's at the 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 core okay. of what function is yeah